Thanks for tuning into BQ Prime. We are here at at BSC for the inauguration of Nabad Social Bonds. Joining me for a conversation is Mr. Shaji Kavi, who's the chairman of Nabad. So, thank you so much for taking out the time and speaking to us on the sidelines. My pleasure. So, social bonds have come up on the exchange, and I just want to understand from you what is the purpose of these bonds? Is are there any particular projects that you're looking at at this point? Yeah. So, as the name suggests, uh, this social bond is uh, is for projects which are socially impactful. Uh, for right now, what we intend to do with the proceeds of this uh, uh, this low bond is that we will be investing in uh, in irrigation facilities and also improving sanitization in uh, in rural areas. That is exactly what we are trying to do through this bond. Uh, already, we have certain assets uh, created out of our own funds. We, this uh, from, uh, funds can be used for either to refinance those assets and also to create more such assets in uh, in, in the especially in the southern India. Okay. So uh, there were bids for almost about eighty five hundred crore on these bonds, but Nabad chose to accept about thousand and forty crores. Why is that? So we expected a finer rate uh, for uh, such bonds because it is not really the money which matters or the yield which matters. It is also the impact which that uh, bonds have to create in, in the in the investors and also the society. So we uh, we expected some more premium to be there, but then uh, whatever rates we are got at seven point six three is fine. Uh, so, uh, but then we'll be following it up with more such offers. So, this as a primer, I think the uh, the market also will be now ready to receive such in instruments in future. All right, that's fair. So, uh, during the ceremony where we all were there, there was also an announcement that Nabard now might think about going into infra bond segment. Uh, and previously, there were reports that there are green bonds as well coming up. And even you mentioned that maybe by the end of this financial year. Uh, so, could you give us a clarity on the exact timeline that you're looking at for both infra bonds and green bonds, and what will be the tenure of these bonds? So uh, right now, whatever assets which we are creating, it is of seven years duration. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a development financial institution, the duration of our assets needs to be higher than from that of a commercial banker. So commercial banks will be having shorter duration assets, right. but there is, as a development financial institution, we need to have a higher duration uh, okay. assets. And we are in the process of creating that. Already we have such assets, 10 year and more. So we want to monetize that through issuances of uh, you know, infra bonds. Right now, the yields at the farther end of the curve are beneficial for such issuance. We are we are mindful of that fact. And then uh, the the uh, the rural aspect, the rural activity which we are doing, uh, it is more of uh, you know ESG aspects which okay. uh, which we are dealing with. In that count, climate resilience is one of the important areas which we are focusing on. Okay. For that matter, uh, we need to now raise resources. Uh, you know, green bond is coming in handy for us. The SEBI framework for green bond, we have understood that framework well. And now we are doing our homework so that you no know, uh, the the assets which we are already created and then going to create will be conforming to those standards. And in that, uh, by once we are sure about that, we'll come. We'll hit the market with a green bond possibly by the end of the year. Okay, and just to follow up to that, what about infra bonds? Do you have any months or a particular timeline in place or the so, tenure? Yeah, infra bonds always, you know, it's uh, on a shorter time frame, we can issue that. Whether we can uh, club or campaign ESG aspects in the infra bond, that is one area we are, we'll be interested in. Okay. And uh, right now, the pure infra bonds, many of the financial institutions are issuing. Whether we can uh, you know, uh, mix uh, ESG with infra, uh, at a shorter duration, uh, maybe at five year duration, already the social bond is there, mm -hmm. but seven year or 10 year, whether we can look at that, uh, some, some sort of innovation, that also is, we are looking at. But then pure infra bond also we'll be looking at. Okay, I think that's something very exciting and uh, like the amalgamation of yeah. these two things is something very exciting. So coming a bit to the uh, general ecosystem that is there at this point, we are seeing adverse weather conditions this time. Monsoon has been deficient and, you know, really weirdly spread out this time. I want to understand, do you see any impact on credit because of these extreme weather conditions? Uh, right now, uh, we don't feel that you no know, in the credit, especially to agriculture and rural areas, have been imp impacted. Mm -hmm. Going by the level of uh, offtake of uh, ground level credit uh, for agriculture, mm -hmm. it is outpacing whatever achievements we had last year. So, uh, rural economy is buoyant. Uh, okay. But then there are effects. Of course, there are no effects on the monsoon. Is there erratic uh, monsoon led to sowing? Uh, no disruptions and such other things, but uh, more uh, more or less, I feel that no, our uh, agriculture will be coming out largely unscathed, 
but in parts of India, yes, it has made effects. And we are in the process of smoothening. Actually, the rainfed agriculture, which India has predominantly, which we need to now reduce the resilience or rather uh, the dependence on monsoon. And for that, we are doing a lot of uh, activities in uh, so maybe watershed improvements and irrigation facility improvements and such other things we are working on that. Okay, fair enough. So you do see some new advancements helping this come back. All right. So one last question I want to understand. Fintechs are becoming really important and lately there has been an increased chatter about fintechs as well. Even at the global fintechs fest, even Nabad had its own panels there. So are you seeing any renewed interest from fintechs in terms of tie-ups and have are there any conversations happening on that front to for the development of the sector? So actually, fintech. We want to, you know, little rationalize that fintech activity into rural techs and uh, agri techs. Okay. Uh, so it should be a combination of fintech. Fintech will be a finance plus technology. Okay. So we want to combine finance, technology, and agri or rural to that. Okay. So in that count, we have a uh, subsidiary NAV Ventures, which have set up. Uh, the rural focused fund of around 600 crores. We have already invested in 30 odd portfolio companies okay. which are making a lo lot of impact at the uh, ground level in terms of rural lives. Uh, and we want to follow it up with uh, one more fund. Fund 2 can be expected in, uh, in the near term. And also we are in talks with Government of India to come out with a blended capital fund uh, for, uh, for, uh, for funding early stage uh, you know, such uh, technology companies. Uh, so coming to the fintech proper, yes, in the rural banking needs a lot of, uh, you know, a uh, lot of innovations. Uh, for that, fintech collaborations will be uh, ideal. Already the Finance Minister of India has also indicated to regional rural banks mm -hmm. to improve the collaborations with the fintech. We are facilitating that and we are also looking at uh, possibilities of uh, doing some pilots with regional rural banks for, uh, for uh, fin you know, with the fintechs to improve the flow of credit to agriculture, specifically to Kisan Credit Card. Okay, okay. So are, uh, are, those, are those pilots in the development stage at this point or where is it exactly? Yeah, actually, we have done uh, pilots with uh, regional one rural, regional rural bank in, uh, in uh, Gujarat and another cooperative bank also in Gujarat. Okay. And now uh, we are doing uh, multiplying that pilots into other states. Karnataka, for example, there a lot of digitization of land records and such other activities are happening. So there we want to pilot it with uh, one of the regional rural banks there. And also uh, the cooperative bank computerization, which we are doing, mm -hmm. we will be uh, you know, uh, topping up with a lot of fintech collaborations. Once okay. the cooperative banks uh, or rather cooperative societies, which are uh, around 100,000 of them getting computerized, we will top it up with fintech collaborations so that uh, you know, uh, a lot of innovations, innovative products can be there uh, through cooperatives as well. All right. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time and talking to BQ Prime. Thank you. Thank you.